How's it? Welcome to my kitchen. Now a few months ago we decided to retile with a tile that's a bit more modern and a bit of an upgrade from what was here before. The problem is that this house was definitely built by a man with a short leg, so nothing is square or level. What we decided to do was follow this line of tiles all the way through to the end, but the problem is because this piece of wall isn't level or straight, we've ended up with a bit of an overlap at the bottom. Now in order to correct that, I'm intending on putting a timber frame all the way around this doorway. The problem is, we need to profile the timber to fit this variance so that it sits flat against this wall. The first thing I want to do is measure the variance across the wall. So what I'm going to do to do this measurement is I'm going to use a level and a set square and just put them together like this. And this way I can find a square and if I get the level to straight I can measure on the scale of this ruler what the difference is between the wall and the, where the timber is going to be. So what I found here is that the height difference between this side of the wall and this side of the wall is between 4 and 8 millimeters. Now that's not consistent from 4 to 8 millimeters. There's actually a bow in this wall. So we need to try and make an allowance for that. Now it would be almost impossible to try and profile the bottom of the piece of wood to fit that piece of wall to get a level surface because the wall is skewed in every imaginable direction. So what I'm going to try and do is go for the next best thing. So if our wall looks like this and our tile overlap sits over here on the kitchen, what we want to try and do is end up with a bottom surface here that's straight. So what I'm planning on doing is taking a piece of timber and then trimming this piece here to try and make up with the difference. It doesn't matter how far back I go if there's a gap here because it'll be hidden by the wall. And then any variance on other side of this, we can just fix with, some, fix with some acrylic. So in order to cut out the sections we need, I'm going to use a router. This is the timber I'm using for the project. It started out as a piece of 220 by 22 millimeter par, and I've already cut it down. 150 millimeters for the vertical section, and 150 tapering to 155 for the horizontal section. I'll insert some bad footage of that now. Alright, let's get started. Just remember to always wear your PPE, some sort of glasses, dust mask and hearing protection.
was busy there, I actually also put on some of these goggles. That's because that router just makes sawdust and saw chips all over the place. What I've done now is I've routed out about a 60 millimeter uh, piece here down to six moles because six moles halfway between four and four and eight, and that will give me the most even gap across that uh, horizontal piece of the four. So now we test fit. So everything fits well. What I want to just do now is just take a little bit of this edge with the router to give it a profile to match up with the skirting boards. And I just need to trim a little bit off here to also match with the skirting boards. Now, type to sand. So I haven't quite decided how to finish this yet. I don't know if I should paint it or just put a clear polyurethane coating on. Uh, I might just do the polyurethane because I have it on hand and unfortunately I can't buy paint at the moment because we're in a lockdown. So I opted to go with polyurethane because I had it available. I'm just using this Rust-Oleum clear coat. Three coats of this and we're ready to install. The sealant is all dry and I've got everything dry fitted into place. Now I wanted to try and avoid putting screws through the boards just for visual reasons and I thought I might try and glue it into place but I don't seem to have enough surface area between the wood and the wall to do that. It's a bit too inconsistent. So what I think I'm going to have to do is just put one bolt in here, one bolt down at the bottom and I'm going to make a joint here just on the back using pocket screws to try and keep that together. So once that's in place then I will see if I need to add any further anchoring points, but I'm hoping not.
Here's a quick tip guys, when you are gluing up something, make sure you glue the right side of it, not like me.
back to that one. All right, so it's mounted in place. It's secure. I ended up putting in uh, four anchors. Fixed that one in the corner that I bugged up the first time. Now I'm just going to clean up around here. I'm going to probably fill up all the little counter sinks uh, or wood filler. I'm going to put some painters mats on the edges, front and back, to just make it all look like it's supposed to be there. You might notice this is my third t-shirt that's because it's day three of this project not because it's particularly difficult just because things are going to dry in between so all that's left now is just to sand off the excess wood filler and just uh, touch up the polyurethane and then it's done And that's it. One new door frame installed. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing. If you've got any questions, please put them in the comments below. And remember, stay safe.